Hey everybody, welcome to Video Log. I think this is five, COVID-19 edition, as we continue to explore ways to renew our souls and stay connected to God in the midst of this pandemic. Again, the disclaimer is I'm not a psychologist, a psychiatrist, I'm not a doctor. We're not here to talk medicine or talk counseling. I just want to kind of engage with you. I'm a pastor. I want to talk about your soul, talk about are you connecting with God through all of this and what are you doing to connect with God? You know, we've talked a lot about prayer and, and Bible study and, and going outside and enjoying creation. I want to give you another avenue to explore um, as we think of ways to just help our souls uh, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is really what we're doing right now, right? This 23rd Psalm. So, um, so back when I was in seminary, many, many years ago, uh, I was taking a spiritual formation class with a Dr. Reginald Johnson, and um, he was introducing us to some art and how art can help us in our formation, help us in our quiet time and our reflection and, and how we can engage with it and just kind of ponder it and meditate on it. And he introduced this one piece of art called the Eisenheim Altarpiece. And um, I'll never forget what he shared about it. Um, in fact, I had to look it up to remember some of the pieces, but it's fascinating. Painted in the 1500s by Matthias Grunewald. Um, it's an altarpiece. You know, when I first saw the pictures that he showed, I thought it was just something that was hanging on the wall. This is literally something that was big enough to separate different areas of the chancel, the sanctuary. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures here in a second. It's just going to show this amazing piece of art. And many folks think it was Grunewald's masterpiece. It was the greatest thing that he'd ever painted. The other part of that story, the backstory behind this, is that this was going to be hanging in a monastery called St. Anthony's. And Saint, the monks at St. Anthony's um, were, were, were showing radical hospitality during the bubonic plague, they would invite persons to come in. This was like a hospital before there was a hospital. So they would invite these persons who were suffering from the plague and other skin diseases to come to their monastery and stay and be fed and cared for as they wrestled through this illness. Now, here's the kicker. Grunewald, in this picture of Jesus hanging on the cross, his crucifixion, has painted Jesus with the sores, with the plague, with the infirmities that those who would be coming to this monastery had. So there was this connection between Jesus's suffering and their own in this profound um, setting where these persons, you know, they, many of them probably couldn't even read, but here they could see a picture of Jesus, the Christ, hanging on this cross, suffering for their, their infirmities, for the things that they were carrying. And it's on my bucket list now. You know, I want, I want to see this thing live. Let me show you. First, let me just show you a close-up of the panel. I don't know how well you can see that or not, but my encouragement would be to get online, um, see if we can get it in focus, uh, get online and look up Eisenheim Altarpiece and just, just study it, take a look at it. Now, that shows you, you know, the picture of Jesus on the cross, and it's really hard to see uh, the sores on it. But if you, you get up close, you can see it. But the second part of this, I just wanted you to see the scale of this, this piece. There's two people standing in front of it, and it's, it's literally life-size, if not larger. So that's, that's the Eisenheim altar piece. And this piece is just, it's stunning. It's, it's amazing to think about. And the, the scripture that Reg Johnson connected to this, this work of art was found in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Actually, let's back it up a little bit because it says, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, Jesus. And he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. And this is Isaiah 53, 4. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Did you hear that? He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So my encouragement is going to be as much as I've encouraged you to, you know, read your Bibles in a way that speaks into your soul, especially the Psalms. Uh, as much as you're learning to pray now, um, 
We're doing this series called Abide, which is about these things that we need to build into our lives, these rhythms that will help sustain us in the in the face of having many of our, our normal rhythms, cultural rhythms disrupted because of, you know, shelter in place. In the midst of all of this, you know, walking outside, enjoying the beauty of creation, putting on music that lets you worship, looking at art that points to God, that speaks truth. And this Grunewald piece uh, could be one of those things, you know, that Jesus suffered all our infirmities, even COVID-19. That is profound that's mind-blowing, and it should in many ways cause us to fall on our knees. Um, and so that's what I pray for for us in this season. So again, look up Eisenheim Altarpiece and uh, read, the, read the story behind it and, um, and just ponder and renew and think about Jesus. His crucifixion was for our sins, but sin is part of the consequence of sin is all this stuff, the brokenness, complete brokenness of our world, viruses, earthquakes, pandemics, cancer. Jesus came to restore all of that. Are we there yet? Obviously not. But someday he's going to come again and there'll be no more tears and no more suffering and no more pain. So why don't we pray right now? Father, in the midst of um, so many unknowns, in the midst of a virus that we can't see, can't touch, can't taste, can't smell, that can cause uh, suffering, even death. And in that fear, we wrestle with, where are you, God? May we recognize that you, Jesus, put on flesh and dwelt among us. And you carried the weight of the sins of the world. Isaiah reminds us that by your stripes, we are healed. So I pray, Spirit, that you would speak into our lives and into our hearts and begin to remind us time and time again that you're a God who has not abandoned us or forsaken us. You're a God who's with us, Emmanuel. So Holy Spirit, in the midst of, again, the stuff that we cannot explain or understand, give us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom through your Spirit to know the difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, everybody.